Maybe we can just ask the audience. Can you guys hear us? Can you guys see us? I have started now. <laughs> Pretty sure there's nothing else I can press. Let me just check from my phone. So it's waiting for me, but it, uh, I'm, I'm online. I'm pretty sure we're live. Are we? <laughs> I can see my face. <laughs> okay, then. Uh, okay, cool. Right, so yeah, I guess we're let's live. Begin. Welcome, Jamie Shaw. What is up? How's it going? All good, all good. I mean, no complaints. I'm enjoying. <laughs> Umaid in the chat says, do you remember him? Do you remember Umaid Khan? Yeah, I remember Umaid. So Umaid and I got in touch. Uh, I mean, we spoke about just motorsport again, motorsport in India, how it's been, you know, how one can enter the sport. So yeah, I do remember speaking to you, dude. Okay. How's your day been, dude? So it's 6, 6 it was... we finally managed to get on today. Yeah. Um, so Saturdays are pretty sweet. Um I'm actually studying something alongside my PCOM, which makes things a little interesting for me. So I just have my courses over the weekends. It's, I mean, yeah. So that's what my day has been. That's where I was rushing from when I asked you if we could push it a little bit. So what are you studying? Can we ask? I'm doing BCom. Alongside that, I am studying sports medicine. Oh, lovely. And you're racing as well. So, uh, big thing, yeah, you were saying, go on. So, the thing with motorsport is, um, it's very capital intensive. I'm sure we all know how expensive it is, but you know, something that maybe people are not, you know, looking at, I would say it's a given, but they're not maybe looking at it is, uh, we only race this much, right, in the entire year. So, if you look at even, um, let's not talk about a level like Formula 3 and that higher because. At that level with those budgets, of course, you're doing championships side by side. But simple example is an Indian national championship lasts four weekends. Mm -hmm. Even if you take another four weekends, if you add it for practice and let's say you double that and let's say you've got a total of 16 weekends, you still got the entire year to yourself. Considering the fact that, again, this is only your weekend, take the entire week also. You've got a huge part of the year, right? So, uh a driver like me can actually benefit a little bit because I'm on a very tight budget, you know. I mean, uh, I'm ever grateful to even, you know, be here and have, like, support enough to, you know, have my initial expenses covered. Mm-hmm. But it is difficult. I mean, it's very expensive. So when you get the the rest of the time, I mean, you can build as a person beyond an athlete, I would say. Right. Well, so I'm sure we'll get into it. I've got a few questions about that. But yeah. generally, uh, you, you're quite young, right? You're like 19, 20? I'm 20, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that's what, 2003 you were born? Two. Two, 2002. So what was your first uh, first year watching Formula 1? So it was, um, it was very on and off for me. F1 was uh, something that was constantly just streamed at home. My, I mean, my dad used to watch it in the Shumi days. But it, like, you know, when he was in... Ferrari so probably when I was about four years old I have you know not too much memory but I can certainly and very clearly remember reading BUT on my screen and saying why is there a butt you know who is butt like why is this person butt you know so I've like it's just been on and off Uh, I mean my first uh, my first proper race that I actually watched was in 2017 so not very long ago it was the Monaco Grand Prix where Kimi started on pole and poor guy got taken by Seb so yeah, that was my, you know, my first uh, outing to watching a, a whole Formula One race. You said uh, watching it, but I started with your dad. I, I actually started uh, in 2017. So, I, so um, I was, I, I was watching it with my cousin actually. So we, we have, I live in a joint family, so I have my cousins over all the time. And uh, he was sitting in the hall, you know, like someone's watching TV as usual at every time of the day. And so he was watching the race at that time. So that's when I actually sat down with him. I saw the race and um, I would say there were like these points in my life since we're talking about, you know, how I started watching F1. I'd say there were quite a few points in my life that, you know, led me to 
love this sport and i didn't ever connect it until you know a few years later when i joined the sport saying that you know it was as if all these dots were leading up to something more to sport so yeah that's how i sort of started watching formula 1 yeah so for me it was uh, i think i was like very young when i used to like flick through the cricket channels and there was a okay. racing channel where i was i used to see the red car like is this the, <laughs> this red car keeps going by as I, i was i was just scrolled past and then i got into like 2006 7ish um i was a big whoever takes on michael is who i want to support okay. because i know michael is the guy but i know whoever it, so it became alonso it became uh, jensen it became kimi and then but i really sort of got into it in the seb days uh, okay. where it, where it became um, yeah red bull 9 to 10 and then uh, <laughs> I, I, and then we got to india um, you probably very right. young when india started but i went to the first one and then it's just been every year awesome nice must have been some exposure Dude, i was wearing company. ferrari i was wearing uh, <laughs> i was wearing uh, i was kitted out in ferrari and then seb just you know so <laughs> dominated <laughs> so you say you watched it with your cousins and then your dad used to watch and stuff so you and uh, just i'm asking only because you are part of uh, motorsport now do you just right. do you come from a racing family is there were there people yeah. in your life racing before this or how, just tell us how you got into it um it was i would say the the most rare thing i would have ever imagined growing up that oh i'm going to be part of this sport one day i would have i wouldn't have ever expected it simply because um just just in simple words when i was a kid when i was in school i was an absolute failure so complete you know failing every subject possible you name it and um so growing up my family was not the you know the type who would really encourage me to do anything apart from you know please focus on your studies and not the you know the brightest kid out there to be doing multiple things and i completely agree with them in a way i think it's brilliant that they did that to me of course they only did it because they care for me you know otherwise they would have just let me be on my own but it did keep me away from you know i love football at the time i used to sing at the time and i used to like properly win competitions etc but it's something that i was kept away from and i am ever grateful because again they did it because they they love me and if they didn't do that maybe i would have you know i wouldn't have reached more sport because eventually i did become better at studies and i think you know um, being a good student disciplined me in many ways mm-hmm. and if you know i meet people who say you know you started at 15 16 you know imagine where you'd be if you started earlier and i'm like no i was a different person at the time you know my mind would not have been able to cope with what i am coping with right now so i am ever grateful for my parents for every you know decision they took on my behalf as a kid i'm i'm just grateful with you know where i am what i'm doing right now so yeah decent so when you when you did start what was it is karting obviously right and just so, where do you live and um, so where do you live right so i live uh, right at five gardens uh, the other mumbai mumbai and right so the 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 extreme turning point i would say in this was i was by the time this happened so it was about it was 2018 may must have been may 5th or some something like that and um, just a year and a half prior is when i started watching you know i i watched a formula 1 race and since that day when i watched the monaco grand prix i was really fascinated with the sport i downloaded the f1 app or i went on their website i was like looking mm-hmm. at the driver names and i'm like who are these you know what's stopping and what are these names i've not heard these guys before and so that's how it you know it kicked off a little bit and in 2018 um, there was actually a camp that i attended and they hosted a seminar for road safety and i was on the edge of my seat the entire time because they were talking about cars and bikes mind you i have no i had no knowledge about cars bikes i was just fascinated with you know motor sport in particular so the he said one thing at the end his name is rustam kersi patel the guy giving the seminar mm-hmm. i consider him to be someone important in my life i would say so he hosted the seminar and at the end he said you know there's this uh, go karting track coming up at wadala and yeah. i was shocked because i live in dadar dadar is very close to wadala so the day it opened um, i went there with a friend of mine and he he was uh, rustam's nephew kayan they both are biking national international champions so i went to the i went to the track and i was karting 
I didn't really I could see Rustam uncle or we call him Rusty I could see Rusty looking at me you know but I was just doing my thing I was driving around and all I had done before was you know play a few video games and of course watch formula 1 so he told me you know when I finished that where have you trained I said I've really not done anything you know mm. so he said you should you should seriously consider you know getting into it whatever you do maybe just do like a course something whatsoever and I was just saying I was five feet tall, seventy kilos. So I was the, I was a proper telly tubby. <laughs> Absolutely nothing in sports because you know at least the past few years I've done nothing but study. So I I had no inclination or I would say no ability, not no inclination, no ability to really get into any you know physical activity, none whatsoever. But that's that's that was the you know that main point that led me to. try and convince my parents firstly it was a big task i would say it was not as easy as it is you know today because maybe back then they didn't realize you know my mindset or maybe where i was going or what i had really just in general so it was a big task convincing them and again the training courses are not that cheap to ask them it was some 15 20 grand for two days you know that's in my family i'm very grateful we come from like a good family but this is not an amount you know i usually just spend so it was a task convincing them but i'm glad i was able to i said please i've studied so much just let me do one thing apart from you know study so yeah. that's that was the initial kick yeah so when you uh, two things right so one when you say this course that you did for two days um like right now if if a kid wants to do that what is it right. you you said you started with no experience in racing and you started right. with a two day seminar and right. what are these seminars and what is a kid you know so what do they do right so the the problem with indian motorsport which is why i'm grateful that you know people like you exist you're like making content on motorsport and it's the same thing that i try doing i i try making content focused on grassroots level because there's just no coverage you know So, if you ask me, what should one do to get into a sport again? Very common question. I would say, don't. Just hold on. You know, don't do any sort of anything whatsoever. Don't get into a race. Don't do any trainings. Just understand the bigger picture. It is very simple to say, cars to Formula cars to Formula One. You know, that's your ladder. There are just so many elements, you know, around it, behind it. Of course you can say India is actually the cheapest place where you'll get to race in the world the cheapest championships you'll find in India but why is it cheap anyone has ever thought of it maybe the competition is not 30 people within a second of each other maybe that's not the case it is not the case maybe the you know the the equipment that is being used or you know the championships we're having is not at that level which is why maybe you know it's priced a little lower again what we have in India these guys are making the most use of it and I'm ever grateful again because they're that if they weren't there then it was nothing so i would say for anyone wanting to join the sport it's best to first study the sport and it's going to be very tricky to be very honest because there is such little information that you're going to find anywhere you look um i don't mean to <laughs> throw in a little you know thing promoting myself here but oh, there's actually there's an online course that i have created for this exact purpose because when i joined the sport i joined blindly i had no family background till date I've I've not really had a coach or a mentor so it's been very I would say it's been a little difficult you know moving forward especially with where do you spend your experience and is this worth it you know the the expense versus the 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 expense versus the experience that you're getting in return so for that purpose I've actually created a course so that people don't make or have to deal with the same problems that I did and they don't have to face the same you know this they don't have to face the same problems that I did They don't make the same mistakes I did, so I'm just saving you time and money, <laughs> quite a bit of it, through this course. That's the whole purpose, the point of this course. Right, but in India, it is right. Um, just in terms of venues, it is you either go to Madras, uh, the uh, MMRT, or you go to Coimbatore. Is that is that okay. just it? Uh, so I would say. you are look i would say this is a um, this is a vision that's looking at championships that happen right. so in india championships are conducted on the it's it's now called madras international circuit mm-hmm. okay. so mic 
and like MMRT, it's just it's the same track and uh, the Kari Motor Speedway, right in Coimbatore. Mm-hmm. So you've got only these two tracks, and of course we got the Hyderabad Street Circuit right. this time around last month actually. Um, so apart from these, no championships are not held anywhere else. Talking about car racing, lot of uh, drag races do happen in India at the Budh International Circuit at the Ambi Valley Airstrip. And um, if we look at bike racing at a local level, if we look at karting at local levels, there are a few tracks. But you see, the thing is that if I was to, you know, like talk about karting tracks that are, let's say, FIACIK Grade One, basically world level karting tracks, India had one in total, and I I think that it it still ho- has the license. Doesn't I'm not so sure. But that is the you know the best track India has, just one. So this? you know if you, this is in Kolapur. It's a brilliant okay. track. It's actually where Jayan trained. So uh-huh. it's a it's an amazing track. Lot of lot, got a lot of ups and downs. I think they've got it kicked off again. And I just I just hope you know more tracks like this are made. That's why I'm I'm glad that you know the like organizations like Mumbai Falcons etc. These guys exist. I mean Coast is coming up in Coimbatore. That's gonna be a beautiful track. It's going to be a beautiful track. I can I can guarantee that in Coimbatore, and few other tracks coming up. So I'm just glad that you know it seems like it's it's finally kicking off. Maybe it won't work for my generation. Maybe it'll work for the guys who are still seven and a half, eight years old who who don't. Maybe I'm hoping they know a little bit at least about this sport because it's this is all going to be built for them. You know I hope it lasts till them because BIC you know it didn't really you know have. A consistent impact. It had a big boom and then it just dropped. So I'm hoping this this sport just grows in India. It's not even a sport right now. It's considered as an entertainment, slowly shifting to a sport. Yeah. You know. Mm-hmm. Right. But if we talk about championships, could you sort of right. uh, very simply break down the structure of championship? As in, what is there? I know there's the JK tire, there's the MRF, and then even in terms of like this saloon racing. There's right. Formula car racing, and then there's the Volkswagen right. stuff. So, if I have no idea, which I kind of don't, um, just give us what is what is the ladder. So the way Indian motorsport works is you at at this stage, or you have in total probably six car racing championships. You've got the thirteen hundreds. You've got six. Just let me say the words. I'll explain what the words mm-hmm. are. You've got thirteen hundreds, sixteen hundreds. To now we have two thousands, and now we've also got the Indian Racing League with the Wolf cars. Yeah. So these are your four Formula Racing Championships in India. Thirteen hundreds being a one point three engine, sixteen hundreds being a one point six, which is going to soon be a one point five Honda engine. You've got your two thousands, which is a two liter engine, and you've got your Wolf Racing, which is a prototype racing car. So this is your, you know, your Formula cars and your prototype racing. That's that's one side of things. The other side is so this is all called open wheel racing. Yeah. I'm sure you know of it. And then you've got your closed wheel racing, which is your touring cars, like you rightly said, the Volkswagen Championship. So if I can be very direct, there is no route. You can race at the highest one if you'd like to, apart from the Indian Racing League, because they invite you to race, uh-huh. and then it goes on. But the other ones, as far as it goes, money talks. So today there's a championship called the ITC. Now the guys who are racing in the ITC that are probably five in total or four in total, which is ridiculously low. Yeah, five guys in total the for the whole championship. Indian Touring Car Championship. What is it called? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. So this is the this is the ITC, the Indian Touring Car Championship. It's the highest level of touring car racing you'll find in India. And unfortunately, there are only four or five guys. And you'll see maybe the same people, you know, uh, winning consistently because they've just got a nice build. The car, you know, the way it's built. people with you know maybe lower budgets can't touch them which means that this championship is very much restricted to people with bigger budgets so it all comes down to i would say a circle of things that's just the way i put it you've got low you've got low investment okay so you've got low investment if you take a step behind that you've got low coverage you've got low coverage because you've got less races you've got less races yeah, because yeah. you've got people who can't afford it you've got people who can't afford it because there's no investment So no investment, people who can't afford, low racers, number of races in general, no coverage, no investment. So this circle just keeps building. And to cut it short, you can race in any category you'd want to, as long as you have the funds. Which is why this sport is a little dangerous to enter into, because you you'll become a millionaire, you know, if you you want to be a race driver, because you'll start by being a billionaire. <laughs> That's what I'd say. 
it's it's very important that people just do enough research before joining the sport it's not as simple as i'll do a course and move forward yeah so when you say um it depends on um it depends financially um you know in uh, let's take for example the itc right is it what are the like the regulations what is, is it like a spec series and then where does the money okay. fit in uh, what, how so, if i have more uh, money how does that work for me got it so there are two types of championships and an organized championship and then you've maybe got a championship with teams so an organized championship is one like the Volkswagen Cup again a brilliant championship where you've got cars that are almost as leveled as it can get no no car will be identical like whatsoever in any championship anywhere in the world no car will be identical you'll find the most minute changes and as a race driver you will find these changes to be enormous yeah. but those those things exist it's just the way it is so that championship is as close to as it can get with a, a level playing car you've got brilliant drivers who are very competitive right so in that championship you have an organizer who manages everything for you even the setup actually the setup is fixed you only get to change your tire pressure and something called arb anti roll bar yeah. so it's I'm not getting into it but mm-hmm. it's just very simple basic changes you can make not even your tire alignment you know so um that's a great championship again you pay to an organizer and you practically get all these resources st- sorted if you look at for instance a team championship you have to of course pay your race fee race entry entry to the governing body fmsci and then you've got to pay pay your team fee which is basically whatever that amount they might you know charge you or you can maybe bargain or whatever there are fixed rates in the market as well minimum rates etc and then you practically team up with them so in team championships let's say like the 1300s you can make a lot of changes to your alignment you know all those different things when you change every single change makes a world of a difference if you make a setup on old tires you won't be as quick on new tires because now that setup is accustomed to your old tires right. so in championships that permit changes that is where i would say it comes down to a lot more on the team than maybe a driver because let's say a championship like volkswagen where let's say you feel like you have the talent you will definitely need the money to be there so keep yeah. that in mind but if you feel like you have the talent you'll have the resources to back you up you won't have the problem of you know dealing with setup but it's a learning when you deal with setup so let's say i did the 1300s last round in the novice cup in the jk national championship mm-hmm. i had a brilliant learning on car setup my alignment my toe my camber my caster everything was you know a brilliant learning for me so that way you even learn what setup works for you what setup works for the car everything is yeah that's the way it is mm-hmm. so what i was thinking about right um all of this from a driver perspective could for for some people it could feel like it's a bit out of reach but uh, as, as in from the general audience but there are so many people who could work on the engineering side in india correct right so the the guys that you work with for example when you did your race with the jk tire championship who's running your car and how do they get into it and what do they do during the course of chap- the weekend so i it's great that you said this because there's a phrase um the stupidest person in the pit lane is the driver because he's the only one who's paying to do his job the rest of them are getting paid so uh, i'll touch upon exactly what you said but just to clear off what i said because people might be like why is the race driver paying you know so just just to break it up for uh, you know getting to more they're not only get getting in but come as a uh, are you there you're frozen huh okay. you so there are five stages of um, income at as a race driver where you're basically can you hear me yeah i can hear you now but it's slightly sort of pixelated and it's coming back yeah okay now that okay. i okay okay so you've got five stages of um, you know income i would say as a race driver or financials so the first stage at which you are you pay the team to race so you cover your entry fee you cover everything whatsoever just to give you a basic understanding cheapest championship in india that you might find for car racing would be anywhere between 3 to 3 and a half lakhs so this is your race weekend fee for three weekends covered so two practice sessions one quali three 10 lap races and that's your 1 lakh and multiplied by 3 is your 
championship mm-hmm. and again it's, it's not the the highest level of racing whatsoever it's the absolute lowest level and fun fact about racing in india karting is more expensive than car racing <laughs> so it's just uh, it comes down why? to resources sorry why because it comes down to resources so if you look at karting championships in india you've got a lot of the carts the chassis etc that are being imported which are really high end good quality so you've got let's say your your charles charles leclerc chassis alone will cost you maybe you know 8 lakh rupees so you've got chassis in a you know a, a that expense so let's say when you're running a championship where you want to be as competitive as possible your budget is going to skyrocket i would say because if you're in a championship so let's say get experience you need a you know a a certain amount of resources to even get that experience if you're you know you can't run around the track in short you need basic resources and beyond basic if you want to be competitive you have to invest heavy amounts so in car racing um the championship that i'm talking about the mrf saloon series is 3 lakhs because the cars are you know they're they're not they're not latest technology in short it is built for budget racing that championship so you'll have it on like surprising but car racing is cheaper than karting mm-hmm. in india so so again coming back to the five stages of paying as a race driver you've got your you've got your stage where you pay let's say the the amount the team demands okay then the next stage is you get a discount because let's say they like you just kidding mm-hmm. you you're a decent driver so let's say they give you a discount the the next stage beyond that is let's say you get a free drive where your expenses are covered this is reaching like a proper a, a top tier a race driver beyond this you will get paid as a driver so uh i would say that is insanely rare but the thing is um every stage of motorsport whether it is in go karts in your junior level you know formula championships at the top level there's there's like a huge list again these are things that i i actually cover in my course mm-hmm. so all these at every single level you can actually be a paying driver or an earning driver it does you don't have to be in formula 1 to earn but you'll see formula 1 drivers getting paid huge amounts again you have to keep into mind that they spend so much yeah, on get just that. getting there. so this is like a a proper breakdown of um, the income side you know of a championship yeah interesting but can we uh, touch on what the uh, guys running your car the engineers what do they right, do so who are they sorry, I, what are they doing right. uh, like what do they do as a day job all of that right so we um the championship that i did in the 1300s there are technicians who have been you know spending tons of time on these cars alone there we don't have top tier technology that works in the 1300s we've got your alignment setups etc and we've got basically brilliant minds they've just been you know years but i would say if you compare it to a championship like volkswagen where you've got insane amount of data collection telemetry to read etc those guys i would say have a, a more challenging job it's more um i would say it's it's less hands on because it's a lot more you have to use a lot more of your mind in short with the with the amount of data in short so i i actually wanted to say there are many industries linked to motorsport not only the technical side look at hospitality you know look at being a commentator in short a lot of people have great speaking ability or you know speaking skills those are all things you can do so uh i would say you know if you want to be linked to the sport there are insane number of ways again like even fnb is one of them logistics is one of them you know the list goes on speaking about my technicians and what they do uh they're they're technicians through the day and they work with our team sometimes you'll have technicians working with multiple teams when let's say one team has a testing for their cars mm-hmm. you know you'll have technicians sometimes just switch swap that's from what i know from what i've noticed but yeah so if anyone is interested in the technical aspect of motorsport th- there's a brilliant uh, pathway there are great opportunities for you guys and honestly speaking the technical side is is not exactly my forte so i would say for that actually you've got great information online that's available but use use connects you know build connects reach out to me i'll help you reach out to others who will help you out or reach out to racers in you know general cash is king but connects are your queen yeah especially if you like let's say for example you study at iit madras or something and you okay. you work in the formula student team as a side thing if you're a mechanical engineering student electrical engineering right. student just go over to the track 
get get in touch with guys like you. Do you do you do uh, data acquisition in your thirteen uh, hundred uh, series? So the, here's the thing: thirteen hundreds. We don't um, we don't exactly have any data. I don't have any data. I use um, an app on my phone that gives me a certain amount of data, but that's practically it. The higher up you go, again, um, it's something that I don't receive, but I am familiar with the fact that you will find drivers on track who might be uh, able to, you know, get data from their thirteen hundred cars. It's not something that. i have you know i have been at least it's not something that i've done so i'm sure that you can get data out of practically you know everything anything so you will get telemetry your times lap times etc and you can use certain things but those instruments those devices are also in short out of my budget for me to use them to get that data so you can but there's always a cost to it do you see students sort of hanging around the track um trying absolutely to- not no i it's so very rare that i'll opportunity to uh, yeah just hang around so i would say it's it's i would love to see more people you know visit these tracks um i only see media personnel and yeah. it's very rare that i'll see anyone from outside unless they're maybe related to a race driver yeah. and the thing is that um i don't i don't really see too much um, you know basically resources for them to stick around you know it's it's not as uh it, you you can come and you'll enjoy as much as you know about the sport because if you're if you're slightly clueless then you might get you know just like bored a little too quick maybe of course depends person to person but you know there are there's not too much for a person to do unfortunately which is why it'll all come down to how much you know if you know a little more then you'll be more interested if you know a little too less then you know you'll get a little bored that's all I feel like it's a huge opportunity anyway because you know of if course. you're a student who knows something about cars so then camber caster whatever right if you've been especially if you've been on the formula student side and then i assume you don't have too many barriers to sort of if i just as a randomer i just walk in could i walk into your garage or like be near you, um so you will have so you will have to contact a team before getting in because we all have our pass if you don't have a mm-hmm. pass they don't really let you in it's uh so yeah i'm going to leave it at you need a pass to okay. get in and of course i'm assuming that a person who would you know take enough time and do mehnat to basically get a pass is going to be interested so in that case it's you know you're going to you're going to have fun again it's just like i'm when i say resources i mean even seating space is actually you know not something that is properly available for outsiders which is why you know it might become a little challenging to stick around for as long as you want to but again it'll all come down to your your want and interest of learning right so I, I, at least dming you or the team to get get them in and just stand next to the technician right. and be like I'll just I'm just going to shadow you. I'm just going to see what you guys are doing for the weekend and then maybe I'll come back next next weekend. It's it's it's, it's way better than DMing uh, Christian Horner, you know. It's it's, it's no point. Of course. So just thought I'd mention so even the experience of let's say, you know, how exactly things are, what we do, I'm just going to plug. <laughs> so the course that I I actually have it it covers, you know, absolutely everything that you you probably you know observe realize notice as a race driver from everything when you you know you get in to go to the washroom to sit in your car to go out everything so i even i cover this because maybe you know a lot of people might be let's say from hyderabad you know but they're not that you know let's say rich to just come down for a race weekend and hang out you know and then go back so all this is something that i you know i i touch upon and again i try covering it through my stories over the weekend but sometimes it gets a little challenging to you know work with the team and then also keep uploading content so yeah then i got to choose and it's more a sport so right and um i just want to talk about you, when did you do your first um, open wheel race when was this i did my first open wheel race um in october actually that was my first open wheel car yep My, where was it? Uh, Coimbatore. It was in yeah, it was in Coimbatore. Oh, uh, that goes. So we did. So it was, I'd say, this great experience and poor results. 
so mm-hmm. it was a great experience it was a 10 lap race there were actually four races we had so okay. all our championships don't have one race they either have two three four yeah. and because we we don't really host uh, you know weekends every time so that's why we have only let's say four weekends or three weekends and we we put about 12 races 10 races together so i would say in short great experience poor results because um, i mean the team and i or the team and the driver in general always know what is what you know what is possible from what they have and what is provided in short so when they are able to achieve let's say x then it's let's say understood that this is what is going to be achievable with what is provided so with the, the with the way my team really worked i am very glad with you know the experience the exposure i got for me as a race driver i don't target you know like 10th place and 9th place so of course for for me personally i will always believe that you know i i'm not satisfied so i'm insanely happy don't get me wrong but you know if if they are poor results then you call it the way it is poor results but great experience right take take us through how it went where do you qualify race 1 what happened so my um if we start from the beginning then i can start with practice so uh-huh. it was my first time actually driving that car it was the first time that i would be at that track it i have been at that track i have driven an open wheel car in a training session a year or so ago so it was you know new so my my main focus my my primary thing was get as much lap time in as possible before the weekend so unfortunately due to a few issues that we faced i could only manage to get in about 12 laps before the weekend started so i was i knew i would be you know fighting people because in short these guys have got great experience they've got great track time they're you know they've done i don't know 900 to 1000 laps so i was a you know i was a fresher i um i can't even remember where i qualified honestly but i i want to say 15th and 14th because Out we we take the, the 26 26 26 so 15th and 14th what uh, i qualified your fastest two lap times are taken and your race 1 race 2 started by that mm-hmm. your race 3 race 4 is started by where you finish and it's a reverse grid of the top 8 so let's say nice. if you finish race 2 in 8th then you start race 4 first so that's that's the format so my my race 1 it was my first outing in these cars in a race and it happened to be a complete wet race so wow. i so i again great exposure because i couldn't see 20 feet beyond anything like absolutely nothing so it was um it was a track that i had to learn whilst racing or doing these races because again my 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 practice i was you know hoping to get in maybe 90 to 100 to 110 laps was put into a little box so from you know it was constant learning through the weekend through the races it's not the most ideal situation but you do what you got to do in short so my my first wet race it was it was going decent till the last lap again spun lost about eight places that spin and we we finished uh, 18th again so it was we were running a little close second race um, we had a little technical issue so we started in the pit lane 26th and i if i'm not mistaken i think we finished 12th so it was again uh, it was a decent you know a race just put, coming to the top and i think um, race 3 we had an issue we had a penalty fell back down a race 4 was again a little decent I think we started about 15th and we finished 7th so you know it was it was good good points and again good exposure my lap times with absolute dead tires were uh, i think Five tenths faster than what I was going in qualifying, and qualifying should ideally be five tenths quicker. So that was a second that you know I gained through basically just being on track. So no real would have, could have, should have. It's again a brilliant learning. I would say great experience, yeah. and looking forward to the next round, which is coming up um, in about twelve days. I oh, love it. Where is that? Coimbatore again. Oh, nice. Same hey, track. Could you? Um, that's, that's one thing now. Uh, could you? Take us through. Let's say you have a race at two o'clock in the afternoon, like that's race right. one of that weekend. What right. is the morning like? How do you prepare? How do you get into the track? What's the entire right. schedule like? Well, 
I have, I have, there's only one thing I would say that is really fixed in my schedule because I see, I, I do what is required and I deal with what I have. Mm-hmm. I don't make any fixed plans because when you make a fixed plan and you need elements A, B, C and C is missing, then you've got a problem for yourself. So I do what I need to, and I do what the situation demands. So I don't have a, a very tight, you know, a schedule in short. The only simple thing I stick to is you did everything possible to get here. You better not fall sick. <laughs> so in yeah. the night, if I order food, it will be probably overcooked food, which is basically tandoor, tandoor, tandoori, basically. And that that will just ensure that I'm not sick the next day. And maybe six or seven nights, uh, whatever happens, I eat the same meal as long as I've, I've been fine the next day. Mm-hmm. If I have a race at, at two o'clock, I could simply be, I'll probably get ready. I'll start getting ready by 1.30. Because sometimes, you know, um, after the race, after practice, you you might keep your gloves in a certain place. But let's say another driver can't find his and let's say he's moved a few things around. You don't want to get messed up at that instance, you know. I, I learned in a very bad way when I missed out on my practice time just a little bit. And those two minutes in a weekend where you've got, you know, barely any exposure still can, you know, is is terrible for you. Because you need to, you know, bank in those laps and you're not getting those laps. Again, it's a letdown for myself that that I did that. So again, it's it's something that I ensure that I start doing a little prior, getting ready maybe 30, 35 minutes prior. I always, um, I do two things, I would say. I have water and I go to the bathroom. So mm-hmm. I just, <laughs> it's great. That's what I do. And apart from that, I could be listening to music, even the type of music. If I'm feeling a little dull, I'll listen to some sort of heavy metal music or, you know, something pumpy. If I'm feeling too much of an adrenaline rush, I might listen to something calming, something relaxing, just hanging out, doing my own thing, seeing everything. If when I was in carts, I used to do a proper checkup. I used to sit in my cart. I used to mm-hmm. press the brake, press the throttle, mm-hmm. see the cables pull, look at my engine once, just, you know, wiggle the wheel, see, notice if you, you know, anything little left out. I mean, you have four lug nuts on your wheel and they look like such small parts, but lose one of them and, you know, God knows where you'll be. So right. these few checks, few things you can keep in mind, you can do, but most importantly, be relaxed and, you know, focus on what your aim is. Right. And feel free not to answer this, but do you have a thing with your vision? Do I uh, have a thing with my uh, vision, my vision, eyes? Right. And uh, right. Uh, there, so, there's a question in chat. Uh, how does that affect your relations? Of course. Of course. When you race with specs, just to answer your question, I don't race with my specs. But when you mm-hmm. race with your specs, it is a disadvantage because they practically just do this the whole time mm-hmm. in your helmet. And if you race with lenses, that's a I would say that's a risk. Let's say, you know, you just get one hard hit, your lens is fallen off. How are you going to look for it? Mm-hmm. You're not ever going to be able to remove your gloves mid-race, you know, put it back. That's not ever going to happen. So what I do is I ensure that I don't use my phone and I don't use my specs, you know, as much as I would through the day. I don't touch my specs in general um, before the race because for me, if I start wearing my specs, when I take them off, my vision will be a little blurred. But if I don't wear my specs right from the beginning, then nothing's really blurred. So my number is not that high in short, fortunately. So I can do those things. Yeah. You will see others racing with specs in a race where it rains. Good luck to you. Yeah. It's just... uh, Okay. And another thing I was talking about is how physically demanding is it? Uh, okay. Let's not let's not compare it to obviously Formula One standards, but right. just at your level, what is the uh, right. physical training like uh, for the next so, weekend, etc.? Right. So to cut it short, I don't train like I'm racing at my level. I train. This is just my personal thing. Uh-huh. I don't train like I'm racing at let's say Indian National Championship 1300s level. I train like I you know. I want to be a world-class driver. I got to think that way. I got to be that way. I don't want to, you know, this is not my threshold. So I don't train here. I train here. So from from my training, what I can say, since I'm training at, let's say, a higher level, is when I do this, I don't feel much. But let's say if you put, I would say, uh, another person in the car and you get him to drive, maybe he'll have a lot more, you know, issues, a lot more of issues because he's been training at, let's say, this level. So to answer your question, I don't, you know, I don't really feel far too much, but that's because of, of course, the time effort that I've been putting in when it comes to the fitness routines that I have. 
so you you'll feel like i would say um just to give you all a little insight not talking about my level but talking about maybe a higher up level there was a formula 2 simulator that i i recently sat on i was doing uh you know a few hours of driving on the brake um it will probably be about 120 to 150 pounds of pressure you got to put to put it all the way down mm-hmm. so you got you got to have some really strong calves you've got to have some nice shoulders but most importantly um what i would say is you you just need you just need this to work properly as long as you have this working properly then the rest of it is all the right there are a lot of genetic advantages disadvantages that people do have when you're racing for a tens everything comes into the picture so i'm a i'm a very short race driver i'm 5 6 but that's a brilliant advantage because yeah. i'm so short i have to sit closer to the pedals ahead which means that if my car sits like this and you put an engine at the back which puts it like this but then your driver is sitting here right. your car gets a little more balanced so as a short race driver that's an advantage for me so as a short race driver also my body is lower to the ground so another thing i see a few race drivers do you know they're all, like they're they're full of this like uh, hypertrophy all over their arms basically huge biceps you know really built and all but you need the center of gravity to be low you know yeah. so so i would say again because i have been working maybe or working out with my trainers jian and i practically share trainers so i don't work out at you know at a level over here where i race i i work out my mindset everything and i would you know urge everyone to you know work this way if you want to reach somewhere then you got to be like those guys not here just on that so, could you sort of go into specifics of what are the training blocks what is is it uh, obviously it is cardio it is neck it is general muscle mass but a session what would that look like every session of mine is really unique and different i would say there's no there's no one element that we constantly focus on the only thing that i would say is exactly the way oh no even that changes so uh the only thing that i do which is just that is my my hand eye coordination my ball boxing exercises but even those uh, i have basically because i again i don't i have my trainers who guide me and we work towards you know trying to generate more trickier ways of doing that simple exercise so the simple thing is let's say reducing the the length of that string which means that ball is going to come back at your face you know really quick when you when you hit it or let's say standing on one leg let's say not looking at the ball looking straight that develops let's say your you know your peripheral vision so that is something that i would say has been a little consistent but every routine of mine is very different maybe one day we'll do strength endurance one day we'll just do endurance one day we'll focus a little on strength every you know we don't stick to okay we need to work on just lower body or this or that nothing like that i'd say it's um, it's got a good amount of uh, endurance involved because um, at the end of the day more sport is very a uh, very much an endurance sport it's an aerobic sport you could say where there's a lot of breathing involved you got to last so the aim is to last long you got to do a bit of endurance training so do you go on these long uh, cycling rides like most it's, of um, do so um even in endurance there are i would say different um categories it's just the way i would like to call it so if my races are 25 minutes or 30 minutes long then i do endurance training for 25 minutes or 30 minutes even in endurance racing there are actually thresholds where if you go beyond a certain amount then you're losing a certain other element of yourself or your energy mm-hmm. system in short because you're moving far too much mo- too, too much towards you know lasting a longer duration so let's say if i am in a race and i'm constantly battling lap after lap after lap it's not as smooth flowing as it would be if i was you know just doing my constant laps if i'm chasing a lap time there is a little bit of more effort you put in in your footwork or in your hand movements everything you tighten your core a little more so if you've been training for let's say 2 hours of endurance a day it might not be as beneficial as if you were actually training 30 minutes of endurance or let's say you know going for a 6 km run um in 30 minutes target your target your time not distance but and you can build and try going quicker but keep the same amount of time based on what your race length is so if my race length is 12 and a half minutes or let's say 17 minutes then i do my endurance training as per that so but endurance is is a big big um, thing in motor sport i would say it gets very hot as well so there's another question in chat what is your 
general day look like because okay. you there's training sessions there's race weekends and then you go to college and then you're doing another thing with um, sports medicine what's a day right. what's a day in the life like so i just like i said about my you know my routine when i'm at a race weekend my routines through my days they change because i i do race yes i i do go to college i do have my sports medicine going on and i do have my fitness routines beyond this um i actually work as a freelance videographer because again motorsport is it's just not cheap in short and i i can't afford it in short so there's a good amount of work and time that goes into freelance videography anyone who does editing i'm sure you know how long <laughs> editing can take at times you know so uh dealing with clients at time it gets a little challenging and it's actually something that i am going to mention of course even giving you credit for it is social media is not as easy as it might look you know it takes a you know fair chunk of time especially when you're doing your research and you know mentioning the information that you provide so it does take up a you know a good bit so that is also an element of my day i would say so it does come down and of course very honestly there are a lot of um, i would say day to day interactions that i have to keep making with people because just like i said in the beginning if cash is key then queens are your connect so if uh, sorry then connects are your queen so you've got to ensure that you've got these two things very well sorted for you i don't have the funds but when you make connects and when you build i pick up the phone and i speak to random people from my contacts that's what i used to do a year ago and you know one thing leads to another and you won't ever know who might be able to help you it's just just best to connect reach out that's why um if anyone here is ever interested in you know looking into the spot i am like i'm more than happy helping you guys i wouldn't want you all to face the same problems that i did so i would say it's a mix of you know a lot of different things what what the time you know demands that's what i work on that's what i focus on yeah have you uh, i just thought about this when you said that now have you ever considered going down not going down but uh, like doing sim racing on the side which kind of like puts you on the map well, like maybe you know these guys like uh, chambolak pass he did formula 2 just because he was a uh, uh, an a sim driver or just these guys who do formula 1 esports and stuff just um, you know just if you're out there racing all the time at least on the internet because you can't race in real life all the time you get four weekends or for oh. that championship have you considered that got it i definitely have and i think sim racing is brilliant you know sim racing teaches you like a good amount about setup it teaches you a great amount about cars and even the tracks that are available uh there are people or race drivers who will you know let's say like say sim racing is the best thing in the world you know and there'll be other race drivers who'll be like i don't i don't really feel it that much you know mm-hmm. i personally feel like i'm in between simply because i haven't given that much time to sim racing but i would say it's it also it's it's come down to you know what i am doing right now so because i'm i'm in short trying to balance these other elements in my life i'm not really able to give let's say a good 3 hours or 4 hours of practice time on my sim you know so maybe if things work out and in short i receive a good chunk of funds <laughs> then i can start focusing even more on my spot you know maybe like let go of freelance videography it's of course something i do as a side hustle mm-hmm. solely to grow with my spot even the the sports medicine course that i'm doing it's actually a little strategic that i've actually chosen it so uh i i try my best to do everything i can as a race driver because the main thing which is the experience and the track time is something i lack you know so i have to ensure that i'm ticking every other box as a modern athlete and as a coach in india for instance there's no real certification that you get to you know teach people so what is an up that i might have in that department when i'm okay i have got fewer years than that person who is teaching people i have x amount of years with me he's maybe got a lot more what other aspects are there of being a coach there's the fitness side there's the psychological side there's the setup side all these are different aspects so just like i in short you know i'm trying to tick every single box as a race driver i'm trying to tick every single box slowly and eventually as a coach because um like i said earlier you know uh, the stupidest guy in the pit lane is the race driver because he's the only one who's paying to do his job 
Now, I completely understand that this might be a sport that I find too expensive to do. To fund it or to ensure that I'm part of it, I'll do everything I possibly can. Being a coach is something I love doing because I, in short, just went through enough and I don't want to see anybody else, you know, mm-hmm. suffer. So being, you know, doing sp- fitness, sports medicine is something that I can also help guide that person in that department, which I think is good. I would want that from a coach. So why not provide it to a student? Right. Here's something I found interesting. I just came across it. Uh, can you tell us about the Paddling Foundation? Of course. So Paddling Foundation, um, you, you, are you saying something? No, no, go on. Okay. Paddling Foundation is an NGO set up by a few girls, women who are, you know, 17, 18. They must be a little older right now. But I was just amazed at the fact that when I was 17, there was a person named Saloni. And I just, I just came across, I think, an ad or her profile. And I was seeing her run an NGO at that age. And I just simply said to myself, you know, it's, it's been a little difficult for, for me to try and grow myself as a brand. I want to help this person out and I want to help this NGO out. You know, I was just amazed at, you know, just someone who's, who's passionate about doing something for the world in short. So Paddling Foundation is an NGO that actually supplies sanitary pads and educates people about periods in short. Uh, and they've reached out to probably about 50,000 women uh, who are in need of, uh, you know, just sanitary pads and things alike so they are you know really out there and they've grown so much i am so happy and proud for them you know and it's it's great being on this journey with paddling foundation i'm actually you know looking forward to what's yet to come in short and i am i am in short just hoping that what is yet to come is great and few more race drivers get on board or people get on board uh yeah it's cool dude. It's, it's, that's on your car uh, uh, is that on your car branded right Yes, it's it's an NGO that I've been promoting since my karting days. So I I really I, I I need funds. I can't, you know, help anyone when it comes to funds really. But what is something that I can do? What am I fit or capable of doing? I'll I will try my best with that. So, you know, giving them coverage on my car is something that I feel like it's the least I can do, you know, pushing through my social medias, it's the least I can do. And so I'm happy doing that. That's awesome. Um the final thing that I've got is uh, Indian motorsport. I think we, we, we spoke about this uh, a bit, but Indian motorsport in general, is it not enough coverage? It is not enough racing or is it all of the above? And what can we do about this? The simple answer is if, if coverage is improved, I would say three other elements would be improved. So right now there is no investment. All right. So basically there's no coverage. Let's start with that. There's no coverage. Hence, investors are not willing to invest because they say that there is there is another sport out there, aka cricket, which we can provide, you know, we can get a revenue from, we can get our return on investment in short. Now, when we're funding a race driver, what are we getting if this guy, you know, is racing at firstly, a, you know, I'd say a, a lower level Indian motorsport. The ideal situation for a race driver is, I would say, to get out of India and race abroad. Because the competition, the facilities, everything you get is way better. It's basically the Jayan Daruwala plan, if you'd like to call it. Because it's the ideal thing to do. You you know, you know step out of the country and you, you race there. Because unfortunately, there's more exposure there than there is in India. There's like a glass barrier, unfortunately. So in India, you've got low coverage, which means you get low investment. Low investment be- means that basically the race driver bears a lot of expense. You know, it's very difficult to get sponsorships when i'm i'm sure that a lot of people might think that okay it is expensive but why not just get a sponsor you know like how difficult can it be it is not the easiest in short so there's a there's very limited things that you can even provide to a sponsor to fund you which is why again coming to the point of being a modern athlete it requires you to build yourself as a brand as well it's not just about sitting in the car racing or even being as fit as you are or anything it, it you know you're being a brand matter then comes down to less race drivers mean there are less championships why would these championships be held i just told you about how the highest level of touring car racing in india has only four to five race drivers you know it's sad so you know that is a championship that maybe might you know change into a, a lower series or a lower type of championship where it is more accessible which is great which means that there will be more race drivers but it's unfortunate that they need to do that to allow people in you know and because there are less championships because there is just less 
tamasha going on in short you've got less coverage and so we come back to the loop of low coverage low investment less race drivers or more expense less races low coverage right i feel like you know okay uh, you uh, um as much as people talk about how drive to survive is whatever it, it's worked right it's worked because they tell the stories of the people and not cover the races themselves and especially in indian motorsport now there is let's say to be honest there are not many races for us to cover if we are going to cover it anyway so okay guys who want to sort of cover it from a media perspective instead of going like all oh, these are four races that happened this guy was on pole that 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 like making these documentaries or short films or just videos about guys like you guys like the engineers where they come from i feel like coverage that's so that's the way to go i i completely agree that drive to survive was great for creating a little you know like a a boom a nice boom for people to you know be curious like okay this is going on i want to learn about it i feel like they spoke like you said you know a lot more about driver personalities than the sport itself which i think is it's got its own pros and cons unfortunately you know so uh, a little con being i would say i i wish they covered you know maybe if they covered as much of how how happy or sad a driver is if they covered a little more about the grassroots levels you know in that duration that they spent maybe that would have been good because right now you know it's it's good in short this is better than nothing in short so i'm again very grateful because if if they created something that is giving my sport exposure then that's what i'm loving unfortunately it's led to fans being what i would say they've learned but maybe they've learned a few things that are not accurate which means unlearning is going to be another process which might become a little tricky is is all i would say so right. i'm i'm looking at like you said you know coverage at basically grassroots level making stories on let's say a guy like me who's still up and coming or making a story on someone who's a technician at a race weekend you know that that will allow you know provide more insights so yeah i look forward to things like that yeah i love these day in the life videos just yeah. anyone's life i'll watch anyone's life if it's a day in the life or what what they're doing it it is brilliant i think those are all the questions that i had have you have you got anything it's been super helpful just to listen to the behind the scenes have you got anything um, else trying to trying to think of more things to really mention it's just i'll like i just wanted to mention it anyone here who's interested in joining a sport all right it's it's not a bad idea it's it's it i am i would be in love with the fact that people are interested in joining my sport you know it's just that the way the sport has developed or maybe in a country like india there are a few things that you have to keep in mind you have to know there are a few problems that you're going to face again it might be the case with every industry but here i'm going to speak about my industry motor sport there are a few things that you have to know that you have to keep in mind you know joining blindly is going to make you burn a huge pocket i make burn a huge hole in your pocket so i would i would highly recommend you know reaching out to race drivers speaking to them most of them are nice guys who understand where you come from because we've dealt with the same issues so i you know i in short in my own capacity what i try doing is ensuring that every person who reaches out to me i am i am right here for you so i am more than happy you know answering your questions i'm i'm quite an open guy <laughs> don't push me too much but you know i'm happy being there for you and yeah that's that's all i'd say right just as as a racing driver jamie told you guys about you know how you go down the driver route but just from this conversation at least and from what i, I did when i was in england as an en- from an engineer's perspective it's like please reach out to the engineers and they even the right. drivers about being engineers because right. they, there's a huge like this if uh, honestly you guys don't have enough support and there are guys who i'm sure can do a decent enough job at being an assistant to the technician who runs your car right so as long as you guys want to um, you know do that it's is honestly big opportunity if you or take it it's there for sure i mean like like you said you know great opportunities but 
you just like you said just great opportunities you just have to make a little bit of effort understand what you're getting into and go for it yeah right. even if let's say formula student is great by itself but if you're let's say some day you're moving to um, moving to britain for a masters in something right having that i ran the jk tire championship okay. for four wow. weekends is so much better than i was part of the electronics group and my formula student team this this is real life racing you're out there you're helping running the car potentially your driver one it's, it's brilliant as a, as another question yeah. uh, what age uh would you recommend starting motor race um, basically when is it too late i would say it's not ever too late based on your ultimate goal and based on your budget budget being the most important thing so i would say i know of a driver who started in his late 20s his name is advet devadar he's a brilliant guy i mean like he had no family background in the sport no coach no mentor whatsoever but he had a, a brilliant attitude a very good understanding of the sport and of course there is an initial expense involved in motorsport so you're going to have to shell out a good amount of money what money you spend is the practice time you'll get so if you get less practice if you're able to cope with it then that's good if you're not able to cope with it then you know you're going to be racing at the back of the field you might not you know reach anywhere so you might as well just not spend that money in the in the first place so if you're going to ask me what is an ideal age to start racing it's as young as you can possibly be and if you want to start i would say don't don't like take it as it's as young as i got to be so let me start tomorrow you know like i said just it's you rather wait even if it's a few months you rather wait and just study a good amount about this sport you know build a good plan create things and it will save you a large amount of time money for the years to come right just really really know what you're getting into because you shall out Absolutely. shall out 3 lakhs for a season and then you may not even, like okay what is the thing about uh, getting a license so it's it's really not a difficult process is to it be just honest indian uh, driver license yeah so it's not indian driver license you can get a uh, a license for uh, car racing very early on you can you can i think you can race cars in india at the age of 14 and above that you can you can do that to race cars and i think for cars it is far far earlier in your life but uh, it is not tricky to really get your hands on a a license you've practically it's i would say again it's a little unfortunate the way it is but you've got to get just a certification done you go for a you know a course etc as soon as you get that certificate in your hand you can apply for a racing license and the reason why i say it's unfortunate because there's, there's really not a lot of checking going on in short if you go to a country like uae and you ask for a racing license they'll make you do like a proper exam and test of everything you know whatsoever might be even from how quick you can get out of your own go kart in short at times because they want to see every possible you know ability and ensure that you're a you're a proper driver race driver you're not a regular person who just finds this interesting you know so uh it is it's it's very just simple in short in india you can get a a racing license for cars for 500 bucks really 500 wow. rupees and to just the another fun fact actually the cost uh, max was stop in paid to, to renew his license or he will pay for next year is about 900000 pounds yeah so <laughs> i i i was asked in the dm about this and i went back and looked at like the sporting regulations and it says uh the winner per point plus four. it's it's yeah. insane how much you have to pay per point and this guy's got 500 500 of those yeah right any so, other questions i'm very happy answering i think you sort of spoke about this there's another question from the putta sector what is an approx budget a driver might spend for karting at an amateur level okay okay so um to give you just a little insight when i was in karts um i had no budget like literally so it it comes down to a simple you know three words ability to cope so when i was in karts and i i used to work at the wadala race track actually they were nice enough to make me an intern mm-hmm. so i i would do like a little work in short and i'd get paid in my track time and i would use i would get about 30 minutes of track time per week 
in you know a, a go kart that was not as quick as the ones that was basically going to be driving in the national series that was coming up but it was all i really could afford so you know with that in in hand week 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 going by i was basically going up against guys who were let's say they had their own go karts they've got their telemetry system their all that data they've got maybe 10 hours a week on track time but as per ability to cope that's what matters so even in my championship i finished second in the championship and it was a good fight so it it all comes down to your ability to cope honestly speaking even if you look at a, a basic expense of bare minimum it might start at about 25 grand but again it all comes down to your ability to cope where you want to reach i'd say if you're let's say 9 years old or something and you want to go to a proper high up level then it just you you'll have to keep aside maybe an asian karting championship today costs about 25 lakhs if i'm not mistaken 25 to 30 lakhs and this is just your running cost so all your other kharcha of firstly training and practicing to be at that level to yeah. be competitive enough to be in that championship is going to be a hell of a lot more as well so the if you ask me for a budget i there's it's it's a little too vague for me to respond with a, oh you just need this much and you you're golden mm-hmm. it comes down to ability to cope that's what i would say nice and how do you um what was that how do you hope to sort of uh, connect your sports medicine to motorsport because nikunj in the chat says sports medicine by itself seems like a vast subject of course sports medicine what i'm learning in it is is a course by acsm american college of sports medicine it's called cpt certified personal trainer so what i am currently learning in my course is everything that is required to be a fitness instructor and we're also touching upon and learning upon a little bit about the nutrition side the psychology side everything how to be a better trainer in general which also helps you be a better teacher so all these different aspects put together if you'd in short just see how a driver coach versus a driver coach with a good understanding of sports medicine functions then it'll always be an advantage to have experience over no experience in simple words so when maybe when i do my courses and i have my certificate in hand i can at least say that i'm a certified you know i'm certified in one division because unfortunately in motorsport there is no certification you require to be a race driver you could be however young yeah. however little experience you know It, it there's there's nobody you know checking anything out so that's sad that's unfortunate but i don't work that way i work with certain standards that i have set in my mind basically everything i would want for myself i want to provide for any other kid or anyone whatsoever you know coming up that's all right umed again do this just if you want to like get into motorsport engineering just to formula student if you are part of uh, an an engineering college set up a technical whatever do formula student and if you can get in touch with a race team and you know hope to get some sure. formula bharat formula student they're doing a really good job i would say yep anything else you want to tell us i'm up for uh, a lot of questions i've covered as much as i could honestly because um i <laughs> i i i would say i just want people to be more informed you know it's right. what again i'm also trying through my social media so i'm i'm talking an insane amount but it's only because it's all all that i'm saying it was not available to me you know so that's just it right and you should you should continue doing it because i know only uh, this much and i know for a fact 99.9% of people have no idea they know there is maybe a track in in chennai and that's it right so if we want people to uh, you know we want people to watch it we want people to first know about what's going on yeah <laughs> i'm just yeah that's all if anyone has anything i'm more than happy answering responding feel free to get in touch whatsoever it's all good right i'm going to find you jamie shaw racing on um, you do, you do instagram you don't do you do youtube as well i have a youtube channel where i post my my race highlights so if anyone wants to go see me race and then you got my yeah you'll get all my on balls there love it thanks sir thank you for awesome, your time awesome dude thank you so for much. having
Thank you guys. Thank you guys in chat. We will see you next time.